Nick Saban had a recruiting video, kind of a Zoom chat with a recruit who shan't be named, doesn't need to be named. It's not really germane to the overall topic here. It went public and it was like 15 minutes long. Now, I was in this very office when it went public the other day and I made sure to watch the whole thing because I thought it was going to be deleted pretty quickly. Uh, shocker, it was deleted pretty quickly. Now, enough people captured it to where it's still out there. And some of you have seen it. In fact, I would imagine if you're watching my show, most of you have seen it because most of you are pretty diehard college football fans. However, if you didn't, here's the setup. And then Director Colin, in just a second, we're going to play you different clips of it because I want to comment on several facets of this video. Nick Saban is the secret behind Alabama recruiting. That's no breaking news. But in 2021, this 2021 class is getting ready to possibly shatter all-time recruiting records for highest rated classes. I saw a stat today. Um, this one's just, I don't even know how to properly categorize this. The things they're able to do in their marketing department with recruiting from the success they've had are insane. Do you know what it's like to be able to look at a kid and say, since 2009, we've had more linebackers drafted than games lost. That's not an error. That's real. They can say that kind of stuff. We've had more linebackers drafted into the NFL than games lost. So the backstory, I've shared this before, and I've, I've talked about their approach, Alabama's approach. Um, I've been around some kids that they've recruited. And so it's really hard to be in the living room or in the principal's office when the visits are going on, but you can get some good, honest feedback off the record from kids who have been recruited by Alabama. And there are many programs that recruit similarly, and I've learned that there are this precious few. It's no mistake, they're usually at the top. There's this few, and Alabama's kind of the lead dog in this pack of few. They have a different approach than almost everyone else. And the approach there is the willingness to look a kid in the eye. Julio Jones famously told this story one time, and I have since gotten it validated from several other kids. They'll just look you in the eye and they'll tell you, we're going to win with you. We're going to win without you. It's like, make up your mind. You do everything but yawn as you say, so what's it going to be, man? Like, I got other places to be today. Now, it's really direct and it's really succinct and it flies in the face of what those kids are being told by other programs. There are no promises of playing time. It's just, it's not the way they go about it. But here's what I've always been met with. Well, sometimes I've been met with this reaction when I tell people that or when I say it on the show. People don't believe that. Like a lot of people don't believe you can have the success that they've had if you're not promising things or if you're not doing things that other programs aren't doing, saying things that other programs aren't saying. So Director Colin marches himself into the production kitchen today and he took the video and he chopped it up and we got the most important fruitful parts out of that video. So there's this adage out there. I think it's kind of wearing thin now, but for a while, as we tee up this first video, there's been this talking point amongst more desperate staffs that they're willing to look a kid in the eye and say, if you go to Alabama, you're probably sitting on the bench a couple of years. Whereas if you come here, you can play right away. It's the old early playing time guarantee uh, that they don't really do in Alabama. I mean, it, you can play as a freshman there. They play freshman all the time, but there is no promise of it. So I've always heard that said, and I've always gotten that feedback from kids. What we haven't heard necessarily is Nick Saban himself addressing it. Well, that is until right now. First clip. And you know, everybody's going to tell you in recruiting, you know, oh, don't go to Alabama. You can play at our school before you can play there. They got all these good players there. Uh, you don't be able to play. You can play at our place earlier. I think that's the worst stuff that people can tell you. Like, first of all, when they tell you that, they're first of all insulting. Because right, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if you couldn't play here. Right. Number two, when they say you can play at our place before you can play at Alabama, I be here they're just telling you Alabama's better than them. Yeah. Right, number two. So that's what it sounds like. Here's the beauty in this. The beauty is that it's a natural filtration process. So I had it explained to me like this one time. This is great because I already think metaphorically. So someone laid it out to me from, let's say, the Alabama sphere. And it's like this. The way that Saban likes to lay it out and the way it's laid out to a kid is you don't realize it, 
but your competition's doing half the groundwork for you. Your competition, if you've ever seen Smokey and the Bandit, okay, Burt Reynolds' entire role in the movie, aside from hooking up with Sally Field every now and then, is his entire role is to run interference. And so there you are. You know, if you're Alabama, you're back here, you're Jerry Reed. You got the hound dog in the passenger seat, except uh, in the 18-wheeler, instead of being loaded with beer, it's loaded with national championships and first-round draft picks. And you got Burt Reynolds out ahead of you, rival staffs out ahead of you. They're essentially running interference. They are putting in place a natural filtration process. Now, Burt Reynolds is out there to draw the cops' attention so Jerry Reed can get from Arkansas to Georgia and, uh, you know, eastbound and down, yada, yada, yada. Well, those rival coaching staffs are promising kids something that you're refusing to promise them, and you're trying to find, really, who's competitive enough to walk into the most competitive environment the sport has to offer with the most talent collectively the sport has to offer and rise. Like, where is the cream? Because physically, they all have it. Like he said, I, mean, you, I wouldn't be talking to you if you weren't talented enough physically, but from the neck up, like that's what that process is about. And you don't realize it at the time, but your, your competition is participating in your favor in a natural filtration process. Because if a kid does not embrace that theory and that principled competition, they're probably not gonna make it there anyway. It's nice to find that out when they're a junior or a senior in high school, as opposed to when they're a freshman or a sophomore two years in taking up spot on your roster. So that's the first part of that. It's always appealed to me because I don't really think a lot of people grasp necessarily that you're doing their bidding for them when you're out there promising playing time all over the recruiting trail. It's kind of hard though for, I've always noticed it's very hard for normal people to grasp a competitor's mentality. Because I've watched elite kids sign with programs like Ohio State or sign with programs like Alabama, and the rosters are already loaded. And so they're, they're always, in the comment sections on the message boards, they're always folks who say, why would you ever go there instead of coming here. Because here, you look at our depth chart, and then you look at their depth chart. Why would you ever want to go somewhere where you're probably going to ride the bench for two years, whereas here you'd play immediately? I get the mentality, but what I don't think you get if you are of that mentality is that a competitor's mentality is the total inverse. A competitor looks at the easy route and says, no, nah, because I'm looking over here, and it's going to be a knife fight every day at practice for me to even get on the field. I love that. Sign me up. Here's the thing, though. No one tells you they're not competitive. Everyone claims they're a competitor. There are people out there, folks who are a dime a dozen, who will look at you and say, oh, man, I'm so competitive. You're not. You're really, you're not an alpha competitor because there are only a few of those. Those are the one percenters. Those are the, like, 0.3 percenters in the world. But if you are of that mentality, then all that stuff that he just laid out, it appeals to you. You love it. You want to go fight for a job every day. You want to play against the best, which brings me to the next clip that Director Colin has, and that is talking about what it's like there. See, these practices are closed now. Um, if you could ever be a part of an Alabama football practice, if you could ever go to Clemson, if you could ever go to Ohio State, and you could see kids that are running scout team that could in some cases start for top 25 programs, and you see the battles, just these wars that happen every day at practice that are more competitive about eight times out of 10 than the games they're going to play on Saturday, it would blow your mind. You would ask yourself, how can people be put through this every day and still like be physically in one piece at the end of the year? Well, it's competition. That's what it is. So the second clip has to do with what I'm talking about now. Let's roll it. Cam Robinson played left tackle here, won the Alpha Trophy. Jonathan Allen played for the Redskins. He was the right end. He won the Gerstle. They practice against each other every day for three years. Now, all those guys will tell you that made me better. Right. The competition made me better. The guy I practiced against was better than the guy I played in the game against. So don't listen to that. It's a really valuable recruiting tool. Now, if you just built a program, you don't get to say that yet. But now if you've got some sustainability and longevity and you've, you've got a finished result that you can show kids and here's this dude, here's that dude, here's 40 more dudes, well, then you don't really have to so much take his word for it because you can just talk to Jonathan Allen. You can talk to Cam Robinson. You can talk to Amari Cooper, Marlon Humphrey, two other guys that he mentioned that we had to cut out there for time. But I always am humored. Uh, and we'll hear it this week, inevitably. Bama's going to have the number one class in the country for this cycle. And so 
I'll get some folks in my inbox who will pontificate as to the reasons why. I mean, there's this, this kind of notion that there's the Bama bump in our industry. You know, in other words, Alabama's recruiting classes aren't actually that good. If these kids were committed somewhere else, they wouldn't be rated as high. Well, that's only valid if they underachieve in mass relative to their rating. Have you looked at the NFL draft? Is there, an, is there a Bama bump in the draft too? Uh, is, there a, is there a Bama bump in terms of production on the field when they're skull dragging everyone? I don't necessarily think so. So the whole Bama bump deal, it's never carried that much weight with me. But here's the other thing. There are 50 million different excuses that folks will come up with that, that is counter to just they're that good to explain why they continue to recruit at a high level. You know the reasons I'm talking about, and I'm telling you I've never bought into anything being disproportionately, let me, let me put it that way, tilted towards Alabama. Here's the main reason, though. The third clip that Colin's going to play for you, I want you to put yourself in the chair. I want you to put yourself on the other end of the Zoom call. You are the five-star recruit. You have aspirations to make it to the league. You are your family's way out. And you tell me what part of what you're about to hear come out of Nick Saban's mouth doesn't do it for you. One more championships. We've won six championships in the last 11 years. We've been in the national championship game eight out of the last 11 years. We've been in the playoffs nine out of the last 11 years. We got more guys drafted than any school in the country. We had 64 guys playing in the league last year. The next school had 41. So we got way more players playing in the league than anybody else. Not quite sure what more you'd be looking for there. Like what added incentive would you need that, that is not already included in the package that you're getting when you commit to the University of Alabama. So basically, I think Nick Saban came out of this looking like a mob boss. He didn't want it leaked out there. It's kind of like a mob boss doesn't want you to know about all their extracurricular activities, but yet when you find out about it through secondary sourcing, it just makes them all the more legendary. Nick Saban is now made to look all the more legendary because he's just sitting there in his element. He's just kind of, you know, hands behind his head, just kind of leaned back. He doesn't have the sweat stains I do on the shirt, but he just kind of leaned back and he's saying, this is who we are. If you want to come here, that's great. We'll probably beat you into a coma if you don't come here, but it is what it is. Make up your mind. I got another five-star to call. And that's the great thing about the legends. The legends don't really ever have to remind you that they're legends. Nick Saban never talks about himself publicly. It doesn't have to because the actions and the results kind of speak for themselves. So that was really fun to watch. I hope we get more. I don't think we'll get any more anytime soon.